and we're back with 16b. So we're still trying to use the squeeze theorem to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. And we had an idea using some graphs. So we're going to see why we chose specifically cosine for the bottom and 1 for the top. we got to establish that. And we're going to establish it geometrically. So in order to do that, like we're going to have to call upon some geometric knowledge that we might have and some stuff that we learned about geometry in uh, pre-cal, as you were about to see. So notice that we have the unit circle graphed here. And in the unit circle, I basically have made some sort of angle, which we're calling theta. And then whenever I trace out that angle, I have some, I'm going to have some sort of positive angle. And I'm going to make sure that I only use an angle measurement from 0 to pi over 2 to make sure that the relationships, geometric relationships that we're about to talk about always hold true. Okay, so notice that you have three geometric shapes that are overlapped here. We have a triangle on the inside, and we have a sector, that's like the pie slice that's right there, and then we have this right triangle that encompasses all of those things. And so we can very easily say that the triangle that's on the inside has to be less than or equal to, like the, its area, should be less than or equal to the area of the sector, right? And I can see that seems pretty obvious because there's this extra piece of pie crust that was missing from this one. So that one has to be smaller than that one. And then lastly, um, both of these must be less than or equal to the large right triangle, the one that appears in red here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the areas of each of these things over the interval from, say, 0 to pi over 2 because like as this angle and angle this angle gets wider and wider and wider I want to make sure that these relationships still hold so we're going to just cap it off from 0 to pi over 2 just basically in quadrant 1 right there and I'm going to need some space to write in and mostly just because I write real big all right here we go so I'm going to color code this for you here's the first one Let's try to find the area of that triangle. Well, we know that an area for any triangle is supposed to be one-half base times height, right? And, um, uh, well, we need to find some, some segment lengths on here, surely. So since this is in on the unit circle, we at least know that the radius of the unit circle is supposed to be 1, which is why it's called the unit circle. So both of these segments are equal to 1. Let's label that on our picture. That's 1, and this is 1. Now, the thing that I'm missing in my picture, though, is the height. I've got, let's say, I've definitely got a, a base length here, but I don't have a height. Let's go ahead and draw one in, right? I'm going to use a red crayon and draw in my height here. And I'll call it H. And notice that it does make a right triangle over here. It, it makes a right triangle, and so I can use right triangle trigonometry in order to find the value of this h that's right there. So I have, I can't use the one that's down on the bottom because it's broken up by the height. I have no idea how big this piece is or that piece is. However, I do have the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Let me, let me just color it in just, just so that we know which one we're talking about there. Okay, so I have its hypotenuse and I have the opposite side. I have the opposite side, I have the hypotenuse, and in geometry, that of course is sine. It's the sine ratio. So it's the sine of theta is equal to my opposite side h over my hypotenuse side of one. In other words, my sine, sine of my angle is equal to the height. So now if I combine that up with my area formula that we have right here, I have the area for that piece should be equal to one half, one half of my base length, which is one, times my, let's see, my height, which we just established was the sine of theta. All right, so again, I could just simplify that as one half of sine theta. Now, you may have, rem you may have learned a another area formula for a triangle in uh, pre-cal, which went like this. It's area is equal to one half a times b. Those are two adjacent sides, and then multiply times the sine of the angle that's in between it. Basically, that's what we just did here. It's just that our two sides, the a and then our b, where are you going? The a and the b are one and one, and we use the sine of the angle that's in between it. So there's our first piece. Okay, next let's move on to the sector. 
So let's see what you remember about trying to find the area of a sector. It's a pie slice, which means that it is a fraction of the whole entire uh, area of a circle. So area of a circle, of, of course, is pi r squared, but I just want some fraction of it. And that fraction is formed by the central angle that we have here, which is theta. So its area should be theta out of how much? How much is it all the way around? Of course, that's 2 pi. That's theta over 2 pi. And then multiply times pi r squared. So times pi times my radius squared. Well, let's simplify, shall we? Let's see. We've got pi's cancel. And, uh, oh, what about our radius? Our radius we already know, right? Our radius is 1 on each of these pieces, so we can plug that in. And then I have theta over 2 times my radius, which is 1. 1 squared is 1. So there we go. I'm done with that piece. I've got theta over 2. So let me kind of recap what we have so far in another color. I have 1 half of sine theta should be less than or equal to 1 half of theta. And I know that that's definitely true for everything in quadrant 1. So it's true from 0 to pi over 2, okay? All right. Now we have this last right triangle here, the red one. And again, I can use the same uh, formula here. And you know, since I can use the same formula, and this one's red, I'm going to watch this. I'm just going to change it to red. OK, so we're dealing with red stuff now. Red. I just need a, a base and height. Well, let's see. This base length down here is the same thing as this one, which is 1. It's the same length that we've been using all along. And um, I don't know what this height is here. Okay, so I'm going to have to figure out what that height is based on what I have before. And it's right triangle trigonometry again. I have theta, and then I have my opposite and my adjacent side. That is the tangent. So tangent of theta should be my opposite side, h, over my adjacent side, 1, which means that my height is just tangent. Tangent theta. So now putting both of those pieces of information into my area formula here. The area of this red piece here is, uh, let's see, one half, one half of my base length, which is one, times my height, which we established as tangent of theta. And of course, I, I don't need the one in there. So it's one half of tangent of theta. Okay, let's recap one more time, shall we? So we already have this one. I'm going to copy and paste it and just duplicate this one. No, no, that's the wrong thing. Duplicate. And let's bring it down here. Yes. And say one more time that this all is less than or equal to 1 half tangent theta. Whew. Um, all right. Now, if you've been following along and not you, you didn't like fall asleep or have a brain aneurysm by now, this doesn't look like the inequality that we were trying to establish up here. It didn't look anything like it. So here's our goal. I'm going to write this goal in, I guess, black. This is what we're aiming for. We're looking for, uh, I say, on the bottom was supposed to be cosine is less than or equal to sine theta over theta. And notice that I changed it to thetas instead of x's because that's what we're dealing with here on this unit circle is thetas. Anyway, it doesn't matter what the variable is called. You can call it duck if you wanted to. Anyway, that one's supposed to be less than or equal to 1. This is our goal. This is what we're trying to get to, but this is what we got. And so now it's like a trig, a trig problem where we're trying to do some sort of trig transformations in order to make the one on the left here look like the one on the right. So what I want you to do is I want, because I'm going to stop the video right here, I want you to see if you can do that on your own. Can you make the thing that's over here on the left in blue, can you turn it into the thing that's over here on the right? So uh, give it a try on your own and then, you know, engage with the next video to see uh, whether or not you're right or, you know, if you had absolutely no clue, that's where you can get that clue from. Okay, yeah. 